Hello, and welcome back. In today's Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight 10 things you didn't know about Lauren Simmons. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we celebrate Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. The New York Stock Exchange trading floor represents American capitalism and is the most familiar symbol of American business. It's challenging enough working in an arena that prides itself on managing other people's money and predicting the future. But imagine what it's like to be the only woman on staff. That's the case for New York Stock Exchange trader Lauren Simmons. This young trailblazer is leveraging her confidence and passion to climb the ranks in a male-dominated arena. Simmons says the financial services industry still has a long way to go to create workplaces that are welcoming to women. But she is making her mark on Wall Street and is truly an inspiration for all young women in business and finance. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring Lauren Simmons. So without further ado, let's get started. 1. Lauren is a graduate of Kennesaw State University in Georgia. The Georgia native attended Kennesaw State University, which is a public research-oriented institution with two primary campuses located in Kennesaw, Georgia, as well as Marietta, Georgia. While attending Kennesaw, Simmons interned at Woodstock Clinical Treatment Center and also held positions at Six Flags, Nordstrom's, and Saks Fifth. Simmons earned a BA in genetics with a minor in statistics. Upon graduation, she had planned to pursue a career in the medical field, but after realizing that medicine wasn't her passion, she started searching for opportunities in other industries. Two, Lauren was hired by Rosenblatt Securities. Upon graduation, Simmons started networking and informational interviews. Simmons started applying to positions in finance since she had a love for numbers since high school. Eventually, she secured a floor trader position at Rosenblatt Securities by applying to an opening posted on LinkedIn. She was interested in another position, but accepted the floor trader position and moved to New York. Richard Rosenblatt, founder and CEO of Rosenblatt Securities, is highly confident in Simmons and is eager to hire more women to join the team. 3. Lauren had to pass the Series 19 exam. Lauren started her role in March 2017, but her employment was contingent upon passing the Series 19. This is an exam that tests one's knowledge of financial concepts and principles. All New York Stock Exchange floor brokers must pass the exam, but roughly 80% of test takers fail. Lauren only had a month to study. Despite her math background, Simmons did not have a background in finance, but she was determined. She hit the books hard, and when she passed in her first go-around, she shocked everyone. This achievement eased her doubts about whether or not she could be successful in this role. It also proved to her male colleagues on the floor that she was equipped to work alongside them. 4. At 23, Lauren is the youngest and only female stockbroker on the floor. Lauren is making groundbreaking history as the youngest and first full-time female equity trader at the world's largest stock exchange. At only 23, Simmons became just the second African-American woman in history to sign her name in the book that contains the constitution of the New York Stock Exchange. It was a proud achievement for her, and the fact that she was able to share it in the presence of her mom and her family made it even more special. Five. Lauren is part of a girl power movement on Wall Street. After over 220 years, the New York Stock Exchange is ushering in a new era. Though the trading floor still looks largely like it did 50 years ago, there are signals that change is on the way. Just recently, Stacey Cunningham was named president of the New York Stock Exchange. A one-time New York Stock Exchange intern, Cunningham will be the first woman to helm the exchange since its establishment in 1792. Simmons is very excited about these new developments. She hopes that her story, along with a new female president, will encourage more women to come work on Wall Street and bring their talents to the financial sector as a whole. We would like to thank Hayden T. Joseph and Company, 
they are an international tax team who can help American entrepreneurs and business owners expand and operate internationally. In particular, Hayden T. Joseph & Company helps American business owners expand to Southeast Asia. Visit www.htj.tax or check out their link in the description box below. Six, Lauren's Trader Jacket had to be tailored. Simmons points out that the iconic jacket that traders wear on the floor is not designed with women in mind. They only come in men's sizes, and she actually had to have some tailoring done to the jacket to fit her. It's still not quite perfect, but much like her experience on the floor, she has made it work for her. 7. Lauren has infiltrated the men's club. The floor of the New York Stock Exchange can be a bit of a men's club or locker room. It can be a challenge for women to feel welcome. There's a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling, and it's very high stress. And not that women can't be successful in this climate, it just hasn't been an attractive option for women. As is the case with most workplace cultures dominated by men, the communication and interaction on the stock exchange floor is not always friendly to women. Simmons says that the financial services industry still has a ways to go, but she says that the male traders support her and want her to succeed. She is optimistic about the camaraderie she's developed with the men, and she's excited about the changes that are currently taking place. 8. Lauren is breaking down gender and color barriers. Muriel Siebert is a pioneer for women in the world of finance. Siebert earned the title of the first woman of finance, as she was the first woman to buy a seat on the New York Stock Exchange and the first woman to head one of the exchange's member firms in 1967. She began her career at the age of 22 after leaving college to pursue a career on Wall Street. Siebert, known as Mickey, achieved incredible success in the world of finance by cultivating the same brash attitude as her male Wall Street colleagues. Lawyer and financier Joseph L. Searles III became the first African-American floor broker in the New York Stock Exchange in 1970. At the time of his appointment, Searles was a partner in the firm of Newberger, Loeb & Company and had done a stint as a professional football player with the New York Giants. Searles graduated from Kansas State University with a bachelor's degree in political science. He also graduated from George Washington University Law School. After leaving the exchange, he later pursued community-based business initiatives. And let's not forget Gail Panky Albert. Panky Albert began her career on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange in 1971 when there were only four or five other women around. She shattered the glass ceiling that many African-American women ran into on their way to the top of Wall Street. In 1981, Panky Albert became the first minority female New York Stock Exchange seat holder representing York Securities, a discount brokerage house. In March 2001, after a 30-year affiliation with Wall Street, she decided to close the doors of her firm and take stock of her own life. 9. Lauren has a bright future ahead of her. Lauren expects to put in two more years on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange and then move on to bigger ventures. Her dream is to become a wealth manager. Wealth managers provide services mostly needed by affluent clients and high net worth individuals such as capital gains planning, estate planning, customized life insurance, and risk management. Wealth managers must have a full understanding of each client's personal and financial life in order to provide them a wide array of financial services and products. 10. Lauren's Advice to Aspiring Young Girls Simmons says the best advice that she can give to anyone trying to prepare for a career on Wall Street, especially women, is to not limit themselves. She adds that you need to get out of your comfort zone to grow and improve yourself. Be uncomfortable and go after what you want. Apply for the job, and if you don't get the job, it's okay. Apply for the next job and move forward. Don't let that be a stop in your career, your life, or whatever you want to do. I think it's important to just keep going. Also, she thinks parents and teachers should instill confidence in girls from a very young age. She credits her mom's strategy of pushing and supporting her to study STEM subjects as one of the critical factors for her success. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. 
Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.